the traditional way of performing time series decomposition is called the classical decomposition. This method originated back in the 1920s, but even today forms some of the basis of the composition methods actually used in practice. Hence, it is quite important to understand how uh, classical decomposition is, uh, works. The first step in a classical decomposition would be to actually get an estimate of the trend component. And to get an estimate of a trend component, we use moving averages. Hence, in this section, we'll talk about moving averages. Well, an M component or an M order moving average is represented by this formula here. So basically, we get an estimate of the trend, and that estimate of the trend is obtained by averaging values of the time series within K periods, K minus K or T, where K is equal to M minus 1 on 2. The easiest way to understand this is to actually apply an example. And suppose we want to perform a um, moving average of order seven, then K will equal to three. And hence our estimate of the trend at time T will be an average between three observations prior to time T and three observations post time T. So an average of all these seven observations. Let's have a look at an example uh, implementing or using a moving average to get a trend estimate from uh, some data. So in the global economy table, we're going to filter by Australia and we're going to use the exports for Australia as, and the scale here is, the, is exports as a percentage of GDP. So here's our data. It goes from 1960 to 2017. Suppose that we want to implement a, a moving average of order five. What do we do? Well, we take the first five values, 1960 to 64, and we take the average of those and we get this 13.46. 13.5 is, is the result of taking the average of the next five values and so on. So let's have a look at the graphical representation of this. So suppose we use a three order moving average, then this red line is a result of taking three observations at a time averaging and that's the estimate of our trend. Let's increase the order of our moving average. Now we have a five order moving average, a five component moving average. Notice what happens to our orange line. As the order of the moving average increases, our orange line, our trend estimate becomes smoother. Okay, as now we have an 11 component moving average, a 13 order moving average, and a 15 order moving average, so very, very smooth. The other thing that you should be noticing here is that as we're increasing the order of our moving average, we are missing trend estimates at the end of our sample. The end meaning the beginning and the end. For us that we are forecasting on forecasting, not having a trend estimate at the end of our sample, the most recent data, is a big disadvantage. Okay, so let's recap. A moving average is an average of nearby points. Observations nearby in time are also likely to be close in value. An average eliminates some randomness in the data, hence it leaves a smooth trend cycle component. Here's the formula for a three component MA or a five order MA. Now, each average computed by dropping the oldest observation and then including the next observation. Hence, it moves through time. It moves through the time series until the trend cycle computed is uh, um, trend cycle is computed uh, at each observation possible. So, why is there no estimate of the trend? It's obvious. Okay, for example, for a three-component moving average. Um, we can either have any estimates at time one or at time t because we don't have an observation at time zero or we don't have an observation at time t plus one. So generally, there cannot be estimates at times near the endpoints. Now, another challenge here is the order of the MA. Notice that so far, we've been using uh, odd orders, right? So the other thing to notice is that the larger the order, the smoother the trend estimate. And of course, we lose points at the end. 
Now, if we use an order of the length of the season, that moves completely the seasonal pattern. So if we've got daily data and we use a moving average of order seven, that will remove the seasonal component. So your trend estimate will be an estimate averaged across those seven days, hence your trend cycle estimate, hence no seasonality left over. But what happens for odd orders, okay? What do we do when we have, uh, sorry, uh, for even orders? So far we've been using odd orders. What happens for even orders? What happens when we've got monthly data, okay? What happens when we've got quarterly data? So if I was to use a four order MA, then there's two options here. My trend estimate could contain an average of two values to the left of Y10, one to the right, or one to the left and two to the right, okay? So it's not actually centered like it was before. Well, what's the solution? The solution is to actually take a second moving average order, so which will have a centering result, okay? So basically what we do is take these two moving averages and average across those. The resulting centered moving average is shown by this formula down here. So the trend estimate at time t will be a quarter of yt, a quarter of yt minus one and a quarter of yt plus one, but then an eighth of two observations away from t. Okay? So if this is quarter three, then the trend estimate for that quarter through the trend cycle estimate for that quarter three will be an average across Q2 and Q4, but also half of Q1 from the same year and half of Q1 from the next year. Hence, let's have a look at this, implementing this in, on quarterly data. So our first four order moving average would be this orange summation or orange average. Then we'll take the second average will be this blue average and then we're going to take the we're going to average those two so that our resulting two times four ma will be centered around 992 q3 a moving average of the same length as a season removes the seasonal pattern hence this is useful for the data that we're going to see most often uh, in this book which is quarterly data hence we're going to use a two times four moving average or monthly data where we're going to use a 2 times 12 moving average. So for a 2 times 12 moving average, we'll have averages across the 10 observations from yt minus 1 to yt, minus, uh, YT plus 5, but also in that average will be included um, 1 on 24 yt minus 6 and 1 on 24 yt plus 6. Okay, so the effect of yt minus 6 and yt plus 6 will be halved between the year within and the year next. The way to implement this in R is to use the slide DBL uh, function within the slider package, and it's quite easy to do. So in this case, how we generated um, this graph would be to um, uh, specify what data we want. This is our first argument. Specify what type of averaging we want. In this case, we're taking a mean, we're taking an average, or what uh, summation we want to take. And we use five observations before, six observations after for the first average. And then the second average, we off balance this where we use one before and none after. This can be interchanged. You can have six before and five after, and then zero before and one after and you get the same uh, the the same result okay so <clears throat> from this um let's plot it and let's have a look at the resulting trend cycle component of this time series which is total employment in the u.s retail so this is monthly data highly seasonal and a centered moving average, a two times 12 moving average would result in this orange line. 